Good afternoon, everyone. If you could take your seats so we can begin starting promptly. Uh, for those of you who have been here in the past, you know that we try to stick to a very tight schedule uh, so that we can get you out by 1 o'clock. We want to be respectful of your time. I wow, that was uh, very quick and responsive. Our teachers at the Child Development Center will give you all an A for your listening skills. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrea Shemakis, and I am proud to be the chair of the Board of Trustees of Thompson Child and Family Focus. And on behalf of all of my fellow board members, thank you for being here today at the 14th annual Portraits of Courage Luncheon. Before we start with the rest of our program, if you would take just one moment to look at your electronic device and make sure it is put on <clears throat> silent, or vibrate, or just turn it off. We are so excited that you are all here today as we celebrate this 14th anniversary of this luncheon. Today, this year's theme is Why It Matters. For each of you in this room, you are here for a different reason. And Thompson and its mission matters to you for perhaps a personal reason, a past connection with Thompson or the mission of Thompson, for your personal or philanthropic philosophy. For me, it matters because 45 years ago, my birth parents placed me with a social services agency for adoption and had a young couple from the suburbs of Detroit not applied to this same social services agency looking for a child to raise and make their own, I likely would have ended up in a very different place. And so for me, it matters because the work of Thompson matters for every child. Today, you will hear the stories of many people in our community who embrace the mission of Thompson, and they will share with you why it matters to them every day. This time, I would like to introduce Tamiko Reinhardt, one of the parents from our Child Development Center, and she will make a further introduction. Good afternoon. I'm honored to have been a member of the Thompson family since my child, Wesley, started at the center in 2014. The work at Thompson's does matter to me because they create a nurturing environment to develop a positive self-image for each and every child. I hope it matters to you because the ages of zero to five are the most important years for development of a child's self-image. A positive self-image will impact a child for the rest of their lives, and it is important to support a program such as Thompson's. And now, please help me welcome Wesley and his class as they kick off, kick off with a song and a blessing, especially arranged for all of you in honor of this occasion. Thank you.
Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but that made my day. Great job. Um, please go ahead and continue to enjoy your lunch. I'm going to make a few more announcements uh, as we continue our program, but please continue eating. Um, I would like to recognize our sponsors for today. It's with the financial support of our sponsors that we're able to do so much critical work for the children in our communities. And so we'd like to thank NFP, who has been a longtime partner of Thompson. They are our presenting sponsor for today's luncheon. I'd also like to recognize Steratech, who is a patron level sponsor this year. Our other sponsors can be found in your programs as well as on our screens. And so we would like to thank them all for their financial support that makes our mission possible. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to thank my fellow board members, committee members, and table captains. Um, your work for our organization is so appreciated, and we do this every year. You know it's coming. If you could all please stand our board members, committee members, and table captains for just a moment of recognition for your hard work, the time you spend to support our organization. Thank you. Now please enjoy your luncheon and the program will continue shortly. Could I have your attention please? Good afternoon. We're trying to keep to our schedule so we can get you out of here, especially since we had a little parking issue today, so I apologize for that. Um, I am Mary Jo Powers, President and CEO of Thompson, and it is my great honor to welcome you today to the 14th annual Portraits of Courage Luncheon. Thank you for your support and your continued encouragement as we continue our 130th year of strengthening children, families, and communities. You know, when I stood before you last year, I shared with you that we were facing a huge funding gap and that we were going to have to take a really hard look at our programs and services during the next year. And I want to say that happily, I think that we have weathered the worst of the storm, even though we still have a lot of work to do. And today I want to share just a few points with you of what we have done over the last year. First of all, we changed our funding model. And by doing so, we were able to cut our employee costs by 13%, and we were able to cut our general administrative expenses by 9%. And we did that and still impacted the lives of over 12,000 children and families. And the best news of all is 10 children in our foster care program find, found their forever family and were adopted. So thank you for your encouragement, and thank you for your support over this last year. But as I said, we still have a lot of work to do. And there are those days I go into my office and I'm so discouraged and overwhelmed because of funding challenges and because of the sheer bureaucracy in which we have to work under. And on those days, I read the sign that's on my desk and it says, when you feel like quitting, think about why you started. And I am instantly reminded of the children and families that we serve every single day that have over, through their resilience and perseverance, have overcome obstacles that you and I can hardly fathom. I'm reminded of individuals like Erica. Erica, a single mother, working full time, going to school, trying to make a better life for her daughter and herself. Her mother was providing childcare and Erica truly believed that she was on the road to success. But then sadly, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and she became too ill to take care of Erica's daughter anymore. And so Erica had to make the hard decision to drop out of school. 
Then she began to miss work because she had to take care of her sick child. She had to take her mother to doctor's appointments, and she lost her job. She felt like her life was spiraling totally out of control. And as the bills began to mount, as the stress began to get worse, Erica began to take that out on her young daughter by slapping her and hitting her to the level of abuse. And she ended up losing custody of her daughter. Fortunately for Erica, she was assigned to work with one of our family partners. And the family partner told her that she needed to take one step at a time, one day at a time, and that Thompson would be there to support her. So she completed our family education program. She began to work with one of our therapists, first in individual therapy, and then she moved on to family therapy to start healing the relationship with her daughter. The family partner connected her with a job coach who helped her find a job that met her needs as a single parent. And Erica was able to get her daughter back. Upon completing the service, she sent us a note that said, thank you for everything that Thompson has done for me and my family. Not only did I get my daughter back, but I've gotten my life back. Once again, I am hopeful for the future. I'm reminded of Richard. Richard was a 12-year-old boy who came to our St. Peter's Lane Psychiatric Residential Treatment after 10 hospitalizations. You see, Richard had been severely abused by his biological mother, and she used to take whatever she could get her hands on to beat her young son. In the social history, it says that she used things like a baseball bat, a metal pipe, and on one occasion, even a brick. At the age of eight, Robert was finally removed from his mother's custody and placed with his father and stepmother. But the damage had been done, and Robert was extremely angry, and he would show that anger through aggression. His aggression was so severe that his father and stepmother were fearful for their safety and the safety of those around them. While he was at St. Peter's Lane, his therapist worked with him to slowly peel back the layers of the abuse that he had endured. And the more he talked about his trauma, the more his anger began to lessen. And the more the aggression began to decrease. After several months, it was time for him to be returned to his home community. And so the Thompson team worked diligently to make sure that the supports were in place in his home community to help him continue on this road to healing. Recently, the therapist received an email from his stepmother that said, thank you for everything you have done for our family. You have been a life changer for Richard, but for his father and I, you have given us peace. Every day, there are hundreds of children and families that depend on the services that Thompson has to offer. Their lives matter to us, so our work, we cannot quit. So today, as always, I'm asking you to help support us to close the funding gap that we still face. It's not what it was last year, thank goodness, but we still have a funding gap because we are not reimbursed 100% for the programs and services that we provide. And you may say, why does that matter? I want you to consider this. In North Carolina, there are 10,000 children living in the foster care system. There are half a million children in poverty. 20% of all young people, ages 12 to 18, live with a mental health condition. And the second leading cause of death for that age range is suicide. And probably the most sobering statistic of all is that every single day in this country, Five children lose their life to abuse and neglect. We cannot quit. Our work matters. So won't you join me today in continuing the work that we began 130 years ago of answering the call to serve children and families through healing, teaching, worship, and play. The work of Thompson, it matters. Thank you. Thank you so much.
It is now my great privilege to introduce Gerald Cross, one of our wonderful foster parents, who is going to share with you why Thompson matters to him. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gerald Cross. My wife, Tara, and I have been um, foster parents for 14 years for Thompson. And just like the family of the year, the wagon hoppers, uh, we've shared quite a bit. Um, I want to thank Thompson for their support. And um, just over the last 14 years, I think back, we couldn't have done it without you. In every situation that we needed help or anything that was going on, Thompson was there to support us. So this really matters a lot to me. And I hope it matters a lot to you. Um, this gives us an opportunity as foster parents to um, open up our home, our life, and um, just hopefully we can make a difference in a child's life. And when you think about it, that's really what it's all about, making a difference in a child's life. Um, uh, Terry and I, I just want to share a story with you. I don't I have a lot of time, but uh, Terry and I, uh, after about three years of foster parenting, um, we were approached with Thompson to um, foster a 12-year-old girl. And I can just remember she had a stack of history like that. And one thing that stood out to me about the history was she was a runaway and she was feisty. So after we uh, visited her in the foster home for a couple of times, I looked at Tara and I was like, oh, she can't run away. She, she's small. I mean, we, we, this would be all right. After about two or three months, she lived up to the building. And um, she ran away. And just like good foster parents, we called Thompson. They sent out a representative. And we looked for her. We put on a search like you wouldn't believe. So after hours and hours, uh, we finally found her down the street. So about two weeks after then, same thing. So Tara and I was like, we got a little concerned. <laughs> Um, this time she came back on her own, but this time she came back, she let us know that she really, really had fun watching us look for her. And I was like, mm. <laughs> So Tara and I had to come up with a plan. <laughs> so what we decided to do, of course, every foster kid liked pizza. What we decided to do when she ran away, we were going to have a pizza party. party. So when she ran away this time, we called Domino's, we ordered two big pizzas, we made sure we got all the trimmings, and we got on the porch, and we just had peace and enjoyed ourselves. And so we knew she could see that. <laughs> well, in about 15 minutes, here she come down the street. <laughs> and we just kept on eating, and so we was like, hey, what's up? She was like, I'm very disappointed y'all didn't look for me this time. <laughs> And of course, she didn't want to miss the pizza. <laughs> well, anyway, that was the last time she ran away. And just things like that is, is the foundation in these kids' lives of what they need to maybe be a turning point. And we're committed, just like the Wagon Hoffers, our family of the year, the portrait of a family, to Thompson's. And we just want to make sure that each and every child, that we can make a difference in their lives. We, um, we have had a lot of kids come through um, our homes. And one of the joy is that they're called back. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. How y'all doing? Um, I'm working. Um, just a couple months ago, one of them joined the uh, Army. And um, the little 12-year-old girl that I was speaking of earlier, um, she remained in our home, didn't run away again. And after about five years, <laughs> uh, she was getting ready to graduate from high school, which she would have been the only one in her family to graduate from high school. And that was a major milestone. But during the course of the five years, she let us know that she didn't want to go back to her biological parents. And Terry and I, we are uh, therapeutic foster parents. And one of our goals is to try to reunite the child back with their biological parents or either a, a relative somewhere that would fit with them. Well. She was getting close to graduation, getting ready to turn 18, so we started looking for a foster family. And hours and hours, and so no family was good enough for her. So she started telling us that she wasn't going to leave. And so Terry was like, like, we had told from the outset, Terry and I agreed to just foster parent because 
that way we could serve more kids rather than trying to adopt. So, so our goal was just to foster parents and many kids we have to try to help them. So she was like, I'm not going to leave. And if I leave, I'm going to move beside you. So you figure it out. <laughs> well, after um, many hours of looking for foster parents, and obviously she wasn't going to find one that fit, Terry and I kind of started listening to what she was saying. So we finally adopted her. And um, after that, she finished high school, uh, did one semester of college, and she finally moved out. And she's now out on her own. I'm very proud of her. She's uh, kind of learned how to solve life problems on her own. And with the understanding that we all need help, I hear from her all the time. And I was just telling Terry, uh, this week is the first time she's called us. And she said, Mom and Dad, I love you. And it wasn't like, can you come get in the car? Or can you? <laughs> <laughs> so it does make a difference. And um, it make a difference to us, and hopefully make a difference to you. Uh, one of the most enjoyable experiences that I can have is the fact of knowing that we made a difference in a child's life. And there are just gratitude when they call back, and you can see that. You don't see it when you're fostering, but as they go through life, you can see that there was a foundation and a cornerstone that they can use throughout their lives. And um, that's, that's just the joy of it. And after 14 years, it means, and it matters more to me now than it did the first day, so I'm sold on it. <laughs> um, this year, I want to um, honor our, um, this year's uh, our Courtship Family of Courage, the Wagonhoffers, and we're going to watch a short video, the Wagonhoffers. Thank you very much. When the foster children come to us, they're damaged, they're hurt, they're victims. So when they come to us, we have to make sure that we provide the safest environment possible in our foster homes. And I'm surrounded by your compassion and your grace. Our plans initially, once we were married, were to have two of our own biological children and then to adopt children. So we felt led to do that anyway. But God made it very clear that he had a different plan as to how he wanted to build our family. Deciding to become a foster parent, it, it really was a calling. It was to give somebody a chance and to break the cycle. And also too, I think the opportunity to plant seeds, whether it's seeds of faith, seeds of hope, seeds of having a normal life, having a forever family. When I first met Miranda, she was sad. She was not a happy child. She was very shy. Oftentimes when I would see her, she would pull her hair in front of her face, almost to hide behind her hair. She was very quiet and kind of kept to herself. She had some severe behavioral issues, both in the home and in the school system. When Miranda first came into treatment, school was a very big problem. Many years she did not attend regularly due to the neglect in the home, Miranda and her siblings were unsupervised many times and there was sexual abuse that did happen and occur in the home. Apparently mom had a few issues with drug addiction and not always caring for the children in the home, often leaving the children there unattended. The real change began to happen with Miranda when she learned that she was gonna be adopted by the Wagonhoffers. Miranda first, I got a phone call through Thompson saying that they had a, a little girl that needed therapeutic foster care. When she first came to us, I think the one thing that she struggled with was a sense of belonging. I think her greatest fear in life and greatest hurt was not feeling wanted. 
not feeling loved, especially from a mother. I think she began to trust us within a few months of her coming here. Now she definitely tested boundaries. I mean, she had many fits oh, yeah. of rages during that time, just really testing us to see if we were gonna stick with her. And I think once she realized that we were going to, then that started building the trust. She had to be hospitalized twice at Behavioral Health during the nine months initially that she was with us. And her biological mother and her family did not even visit her. But we were there every day. We participated in all of the you know, parent meetings and whatnot. But I think what really turned the corner for her was the second time she was hospitalized. And uh, one night she just started crying and she crawled up in my lap when I was there at the hospital and she called me mommy that day. And ever since then, she called me mom. And I think that was a turning point for her because I was being mommy to her, the type of mommy that she craved. Even though she had had all these bad behaviors that landed her in behavioral health, we were still there. We were, we were still committed to her. Looking back at Miranda today, again, comparing it from when she first came here, it is night and day. And again, it's given a child a chance and, and breaking a cycle that allowed her to bloom. The transformation is just, it, it is miraculous. And it's not just her outward appearance, but her inward beauty is now like truly shining through. I see a shatter. made a lot of progress. She's completely different from where she was when I first met her. Now when you see Miranda, she smiles a lot. Her hair is pulled away from her face. She is very happy. Knowing where she came from and seeing her thrive so much has brought joy to my life. Before I came to the Wagenhoffers, I worried about not knowing if anybody could love me or trust me. I used to kick walls, break them, and throw all my stuff around. But I've changed. <laughs> we invite parents and children to come back and sit on a panel night. And this is an opportunity for our new parents to see and hear real stories from the children and from our parents. Miranda's participation on this panel is, is unique. It's unbelievable, actually. I've never seen a child so eager to share her story of past trauma and where she is now. And she's so happy to share about her adoptive family. It's beautiful to watch. When I think about the Wagenhoffers, I think of angels, angels on a mission. In this line of work, knowing that you have a success story such as them, I'm fulfilled, and it's a good feeling. Without question, we could have never done this without the support of Thompson. Again, we've been part of their family for 12 years, yeah. and it's been a privilege. Thompson has made this journey easier. There have been difficulties and some things have not always been sunny, but again, the support that they offer is second to none. There's no doubt that she will achieve all that she puts her mind to and her heart to. I, I just want to see God's perfect plan just unfold for her. I know that she's going to make a huge imprint on this world. I really do. I mean, she's already... She's already made a huge imprint in my life and on our family. I know she's gonna make a huge imprint on this world and I just can't wait to see what that's gonna be.
Thank you. I'm Natasha Holly, and I work in our foster care program. I've had a close relationship with the wagon offers for five years. This is such hard work, and the struggles are real. Miranda is developing into an amazing teenager. But one thing that still that she deals with daily is the trauma of her early childhood. This work matters because we must be advocates for the children dealing with the effects of trauma. We must ensure they receive the services they need. It matters to me because personally, I've experienced firsthand the benefits of having a great support system when you adopt through foster care. I hope it matters to you because it truly takes a village. We need more families like the Crosses and the Wagonhoffers. We need dedicated staff to provide training, crisis care, and support. We need your generous commitment to ensure Miranda and children like her get the families they need and deserve. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Mark Wagonhoffer. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, as uh, Natasha said, I'm Mark Wagenhofer, and on behalf of my family, uh, which is made up of, of me, my wife Sherry, definitely the better half, um, and our five adopted children, uh, we have Michaelin as our oldest, Casey, Christopher, Miranda, who you've met, and Ella. I just want to thank Thompson and thank all the supporters of Thompson. The work that Thompson does it, it matters greatly to us and all the families that have fostered children or adopted children through Thompson's. You know, we saw the video, uh, it ended in a, you know, a positive fade to black, but it's not the end of the story. Um, where all our issues and problems are over and the family rides off into the sunset. Uh, as with many children who are subjected to abuse and trauma, uh, Miranda still has challenges, uh, both at school and at home. And uh, we, we have faith that, that with the continued support and therapy that we receive through Thompson, Miranda is going to continue to overcome these challenges. The foster services aren't the, and foster services and therapy aren't the only things that Thompson's does. I, I recently finished a 12-week uh, 12, 12 incredible year parenting class that was also open to the public. Uh, it was actually also uh, even court ordered for some of the participants. Uh, but it was really amazing to me to see parents who had you know, no previous challenge but were, or, or no previous experience or, or what have you, you know, using their own skills to, to raise kids. But after the training it, that they received, they would come back after each one of the weeks and re tell story after story of success in dealing with their children that were positive and rich. And Thompson is, is giving an opportunity for others uh, for more positive pairing and to break unhealthy and abusive cycles. Uh, these are just a couple of things that are impacting my family, the community, and it, none of it would be possible without the support from Thompson's and those of you who support Thompson's. So thank you very much. it's that time. For those of you who have been here before, you know what my job is and you know what your job is. Good afternoon, my name is Steve Hall. My family has been with Thompson since about 2011 as a therapeutic foster home. It has been an amazing time. We have had our difficulties, but we have also seen miracles. Our love and thanks goes out to Mary Jo and staff for the incredible work that is done every day. This year's theme, as you've heard, is why it matters. You saw and heard why it matters from folks like the Wagonhoffers. Now let me tell you a little bit why the work at Thompson matters so much to me. Imagine being 15 and scared. 
Imagine the person who you've known as mom pleading with you to call 911 as her breath grows shorter from respiratory distress. Imagine the ambulance pulling away while you sit in a police car. You're not in trouble. You are a ward of the state, and the police officer has just become your primary care provider. Imagine being asked by the officer, do you know where you want to go? Where do I want to go? I want to go to my family, but I don't have one. I want to go to my friends, but the state won't allow that. Where do I want to go? I don't know, but I have been here before. When I was 18 months old, I was abandoned by my family, left on the side of the road, I was told. At 10, my foster family of seven years also abandoned me. And here I sit, abandoned again. My foster mother of four and a half years left in an ambulance with the lights off and the sirens not screaming. So why don't you tell me, sir, where do you think I should go? But you don't say any of that. Instead, you softly speak, I would like to go to the halls. That is the story of how John came into our life. He stayed with us for 16 months, and then he was gone. We did not abandon him. For the first time in his life, John, John made a choice to leave. He chose to leave because someone asked him to be a part of their family. And so at the age of 16, after 2,499 days in foster care, John found his forever family. Thompson was there every step of the way. He is learning to trust. He is feeling the security and love that, can be abs that has been absent from his life for so long. He is doing well in school. He sits at the dinner table with his parents and his sister and laughs. His dad is his best friend. That is why it matters. It matters that you are here today. You are here for a reason. You have been a witness to the transformative care and life-changing support that is administered in Charlotte every day to thousands of children and families by the staff of Thompson and the work that they do. You are here because Mary Jo and her staff cannot do it alone. In fact, they do not want to do it alone. They want us to be a community that cares about our children. They want us to be a community that gives abundantly for those that are willing to stand in the gap for children that are suffering, forgotten, and mistreated. They want us to be a community that believes in miracles. We are that community, and we are going to prove it today. For the next few minutes, I'll walk you through the process of making your gift. I'd like to review the pledge cards that you'll be receiving in a few minutes from your cable captains. To build a stronger foundation for expanding our services and to allow Mary Jo and her team to plan for the future, over a decade ago, we established a partnership called the Cherish the Children's Society. At this time, I'd like to sincerely and warmly thank our current members of the society. Your partnership with us has been critical in our ability to plan for the future, especially over the last year. Thank you for your generosity and partnership. On today's program, you will see the list of all the Cherish the Children members. If you've been inspired by what you have seen, I invite you to join this society today. Many of you attended our previous events and pledged your support at other levels than the Cherish the Children Society. We want to thank you as well. To all of you that have made a multi-year pledge at any level right now, I ask you to consider increasing your pledge, extending the years of your current pledge, or reaffirming your current commitment. If you're a member in the final year of your initial pledge, now is the time to please re-pledge or extend that out a few years. With continued funding cuts looming, we cannot do this important work without your partnerships. As you look at the pledge card on the screens, 
Let me explain a little bit more about the three membership levels in the Cherish the Children's Society. And as I talk about these levels, I want to acknowledge that they represent a significant gift to Thompson. But as I read through the amounts, try dividing the amounts by 12 months or 52 weeks. I'll give you an example of that as we go through. The first level is a commitment of $1,000 a year for five years. Now, if you choose to pay monthly on a credit card, that would come out to about $83.33. Going a little bit further, it's less than $3 per day. Please do consider a stretch to this level. Your contribution to this level will allow us to provide the much needed services for five children in one of our many programs. As we just witnessed today, Miranda was one of those children a few years ago. Our second level is a commitment of 5,000 a year for five years. A gift at this level will allow us to provide life-changing services and staff for 25 children. The ripple effect of your support is transformational experience for children and families. Your gift will allow us to do even more of this work. And finally, the third level is a special commitment of 10,000 a year for five years. This substantial investment would allow us to bring the amazing programs and life-changing services to 50 children in this area. To think of the impact this level of support will have on the individual lives is truly amazing. If you are joining us today as a member of the Cherish the Children Society, my personal thanks for your generous support. We greatly respect and appreciate that we will have all types of different giving measures. And so we provided the next fill in line just for you. On this line, tell us how much you would like to give and for how many years. I ask you to can seriously consider making an annual gift and even possibly a three or five year pledge. Remember, all gifts of five years and over $1,000 will make you into a membership of the Cherish the Children's Society. Table captains, at this time, I'd like to ask you to please pass, pass out your pledge cards. Some of you cheated and got ahead a little bit. That's OK. <laughs> I see everything up here. Now, I ask that you take some thoughtful time as you each complete your pledge card. I'll share a little story with you. A gentleman came up to me recently and expressed that um, a after he gave a donation that um, I was doing the hard part, the easy part was writing a check. My suggestion back to him was that maybe he needed to write a bigger check to make it more difficult for him. So <laughs> please consider that as you go through. You will see on the card as well, there's payment methods. We will take anything cash, check, credit cards, stock. We have enough children, so we'll keep those. But please, you can be creative in contact with that as well. I'm glad we're having fun this afternoon because this is a joy, and it's awesome to see this energy on behalf of the children. Here's the final thought that I would like for you to hear, because I know that your hearts have been touched today. You matter. My hope is that you believe that, and a single person can make a difference. I'll give you some time now to finish filling out your pledge cards, and when you are finished, please pass the envelopes back to your table captain. Again, on behalf of the children and families that we serve, thank you for taking the time out of your busy lives to be here. It matters more than you know. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I'd like to make a special thank you to Steve and his family, as well as the Wagenhoffers, the Crosses, all of the foster families of Thompson and the staff of Thompson for the work that you do 
please know that what you do matters to the children and the families in our community. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for taking time out of your day to be here and to hear these stories and to share your time with us. Throughout this year, we'll be in touch with you to extend an invitation to visit one of our campuses. If you choose the Child Development Center, I'm sure that the students will give you a special treat, maybe another song, blessing. Um, and I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. As promised, my watch shows it is just now ringing 1 o'clock. Again, thank you for being here. Table captains, please take the centerpieces as a token of our appreciation. Thank you very much.